can uh, call this meeting to order of the uh, Hanover Borough Council Finance Committee workshop for May 18th at 7 uh, 13 p.m. Um, we did hold an executive session that we just finished um, involving, involving the following matters under the Sunshine Act. Police personnel matters, section 708A1 and A, oops, sorry, A5. And litigation regarding a conditional use public hearing, section 708A4 and A5. From 6.30 to 7.10. Thank you. Okay. So with that, um, acknowledge the executive session. We'll start with um, public comment. Oh, and we need a roll call, Dory. Thank you. Would you do the roll call, please? Okay. Um, so this includes the people on... Uh, Digitally. Digitally. Here. Mr. Greenholt. Here. Mr. Greenholt. Here. Mr. Hegberg. Here. Mr. Lockhart. Here. Mr. Rockhart. Here. Mr. Rockhart. Here. Mr. Roland. Here. Dr. Rock. Here. Mr. Hegberg. Here. Okay. <laughs> Got it. They had to unlock me. Thank you. Okay, we have you gotta watch what you say, Chuck. <coughs> All right. Uh, so then I go back to um, public comment. Do we have any public comment? Yeah. Please. Introduce yourself, name, and, and address. Uh, Jim or James Bumgardner, 308 Grant Drive, Hanover. Uh, knowing that uh, I was not able to attend the uh, hearing for the uh, short-term rental on Primrose, I'd like to make a few comments, understanding that whatever is legal, not legal, I still have the right to express uh, findings that I have discovered since the last hearing in my busy schedule. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, plot plan that was presented by Hanover Land Services, and they had indicated there's two zones. Uh, the zone that's important is the R1, and there's discrepancies in the square footage is that they have uh, certified, quote, unquote. Uh, the house they had indicated was 2874 plus or minus but on the site plan. But when you go to their floor plan, the square footage is 2970. Uh, additionally, uh, they included uh, 414 square feet of impervious uh, for the swimming pool deck, but they did not include the pool. And for clarification and for interpretation, uh, there's this back and forth constantly about pervious, impervious, what's pervious, what's impervious. But the, in zoning, in the rule of zoning, the requirement is for lot coverage. So if you could build a parking lot that is like out at the Hillside Medical Center in the back of the building, there's this incredibly large parking lot that is impervious. It's concrete that has been designed to absorb the storm water and it goes into the stones, does not contribute to the size of the pond. It's, it's pervious pavement not to be confused with lot coverage. 
So if you were to take out the word pervious or impervious, essentially you could completely cover your lot with pervious pavement and meet the definition the definition in the stormwater management plan for pervious pavement. What they did here was they did not include the pool because they're saying that, I think they're saying, or they're implying that because when the water falls on the pool, it does not contribute to stormwater. However, it does, in, it does contribute to lot coverage. So if you go through the ordinance and you look at um, your definitions, and I, I'm, pardon me, I'm on my cell phone, but there's a section in the ordinance that talks about uh, structures. And it's any man-made object having a discernible stationary location, whether or not affixed to the land. Obviously, a swimming pool is a man-made structure. It is affixed, and it does contribute to lot coverage. And then additionally, if you get over to impervious surfaces, a surface that does not absorb rain, which swimming pool doesn't absorb it, it does collect it, uh, includes all buildings, parking areas, driveways, roads, sidewalks, storage areas, areas of concrete, asphalt, and other such areas as shall be determined to be non-porous by the borough council or the borough engineer. And I guess what I'm saying is, is that there's this ongoing confusion about pervious, impervious, but there's no, dis there, there's no discussion about lot coverage. So you could cover your entire lot with a swimming pool and you could meet the the, the definition of lot coverage because it doesn't per, it doesn't prevent the water it, the water doesn't go into the earth, the surface of the ground or the earth but it also covers the lot and I, I guess what I'm asking you to do is to understand that the intent of lot coverage has more to do with aesthetics than it has to do with stormwater. This stormwater is a new thing. And it, it is by the grace of God that the Chesapeake Bay Commission finally got everyone's attention. And we don't like it, but it's a fact. And um, so this gets confused. You, you get confused as to are we talking about stormwater or lot coverage? And I really think we're talking about coverage. So I'm asking you to, I'm imploring you to, to consider the swimming pool as lot coverage. Also, if you look at her presentation for primrose, there's no sidewalk between the house and the pool. I mean, there probably will be, and, and that's, speculation but there's also discrepancies in their square footages so I'm saying that 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 they don't really comply with the requirement of lot coverage they're over by two percent minimum and then additionally uh, in terms of character I I would venture to guess that there's no residential property in Hanover that has 10 parking spaces. There, there are businesses that don't have parking 10 parking spaces. And uh, it totally throws this thing out of character. And it, it's up to you guys to draw the line in the sand and say that, that we don't agree with this and we're going to deny this and we'll let the judge decide. I mean, so that, that's all I'm asking you to do is think about these, these discrepancies at, and the character of this lot and deny this application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, 
Mr. Bumgardner, as you know, the borough council is not permitted to take. I get that. No, let me finish the statement, okay? <laughs> is not permitted to take anything that you said in, into consideration when it decides this matter. Perfect. Um, it has to rely on what was presented at the okay. hearing. That's perfect. That's fine. Thank you. However, I will ask for a council to going forward that they get their staff and their, their paid professionals to do their homework and not allow this stuff to go through in this fashion. And it's really sloppy work. That's just, I feel that way. And, and I get it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, public comment? Okay, then we'll proceed with the uh, consent agenda. Um, items 3A through E. Um, may I have a motion to I'll approve? I'll make a motion, but I'd like to pull E out for our question. Okay, so a motion then to approve A through D on the consent agenda. And a second, please. Second. Okay. Uh, do we need a door? Do we need a roll call or not? No. No? Okay. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, point E. My question might not be a. a can be answered. I don't know. I'm just curious. I'm only just nosy, just wondering where the, where the liquor control board thing came from. Which place is going to yeah, be? Where it came from? Yeah. Who sold it to them? Yeah. I don't know. If I, oh, can I don't you tell know. me that? Oh, I have that information. Huh? Yeah. Oh, she's. Sorry. I looked it up on the LCBO website. It was uh, Maitland Brothers, which was, I think, the old Patty and John's. Oh. Right. Maybe they had, well, they have one now, but I don't know how that works. It was, it was under Maitland Brothers. Oh, I do remember. Probably what it was. Yeah. I thought that would have been a long time. It has one there. Uh, information, they, you can uh, look this up on the, on the PLCB Plus licensing website. Well, thank you for checking that out. Thank you. I can certainly vote. To, I mean, I have vote. To All right, so you're, you're, so we're okay with. All right, so you make a motion make for a motion E. For a, bit, sure. mm -hmm. a second, please, I'll for second. item E. Here, here. All right. I'll second. <laughs> all right, we're all the, the LCB people. All right, let's That's go. That's right. <laughs> um, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Item four. Um, Silas. Talk about the Trail Town Action Plan and um, council support. Great, uh, thank you, council. I know that uh, by, we have a presentation that'll come up for those that are at home on Zoom, uh, but you should have a copy of the presentation also in front of you that was distributed. Thanks for having me back. Uh, it was March of last year that we came in front of council to first introduce the idea of a Trail Towns program. Uh, and our interest in uh, expanding it to include Hanover. And really what tonight is about is reporting on what we've been up to the last year, working with the community to uh, build this program and get input on it. And uh, you all received in advance a copy of our action plan that we've put together uh, and also a resolution that we'll request that council approve. But I wanna walk you through just um, how we got here and, and what we've learned over the past year and what we're proposing. Uh, just to, and if you can go to the next slide, please, just to refresh your memory, this is a program that is countywide. We started it about two years ago in five communities. Now I've expanded it to two additional communities, Wrightsville and Hanover. We've received significant support from the Department of Community and Economic Development at the state level. Senator Kristen Phillips Hill has really helped us raise some money for this program. Uh, and it really tries to help communities leverage the good assets that they already have, 
uh, and the fact that people want to visit our small towns in York County, but then also try to create new opportunities and improve those places as well. Um, the primary goals, if you go to the next slide, uh, are really to increase patronage and revenue for businesses in these communities by getting more people to visit them and when they come to our communities to spend more time here. Um, the longer that someone stays in a community, obviously the more likely they are to buy a meal, buy something in a shop, uh, even stay overnight, which is sort of the, the golden standard that if you can get somebody to stay overnight, they're going to spend a lot more money in your community. Um, in increase the number of trail-friendly businesses in each community, which simply means the businesses that are willing to have somebody come in, even if they are camping at Cador State Park and might not have had a shower in a day, or they might have been out on the trail and have mud all over their pants. You know, the kind of business that's okay with you propping your bike outside or maybe filling up your water bottle. Um, and really helping businesses understand why that's good for their bottom line and, and why they should consider that. We also, through this program, just want to generally raise the prominence of the outdoor economy in general. This is not something that historically has been part of the Economic Alliance's economic strategy, but in York County we have great state parks, we have great trails, we have open space, we have a county parks program, all of which does drive a lot of visitation and consumer spending in the county, and we want to help elevate that in general. So this program is part of that. So on the next slide, you can see why Hanover. Um, this is sort of the list of assets that we identified very early on with the help of the community. The state park, uh, the trolley trail that is still in its infancy but will grow over time. Uh, Long Arm Reservoir is very close by. A bunch of small businesses in the downtown that are already attracting patrons and providing services. And uh, some community partners, partners like Main Street Hanover, the Hanover cyclists who share an interest. And then the opportunities that we see on the horizon, the continued redevelopment and revitalization of Hanover, Hanover uh, the opportunity to attract heritage tourism that's already happening in Gettysburg and Lancaster and, and um, in parts of York County and really start driving it into Hanover. And then, of course, you know, continuing to expand the Hanover Trolley Trail and taking advantage of the visitation from that. So very early on, after we met with council last year, we created an action team. You can see the members of the team, including the mayor um, and others that have been engaged throughout this process, uh, really helping to advise us along the way uh, and participating in some of the public events that we've had as part of the process. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you can see what this planning process has looked like. We initiated it in roughly April of last year. We created the action team uh, who helped us develop some early goals and recommendations. We did a public survey of Hanover residents and got 462 responses, and that just helped us get some general ideas about what people already love about the community, what opportunities they see. And you can see some of that feedback that Cador State Park, for example, ranks very high. Uh, proximity to Gettysburg and Hershey ranks very high, but also local restaurants and breweries uh, that we already know are popular. The types of outdoor recreation, uh, the places where people do outdoor recreation. And then in addition to this public survey, we did 20 one-on-one -on -one stakeholder interviews with uh, community stakeholders, uh, elected officials, uh, avid trail users to get their one-on-one -on -one, uh, um, thoughts about the community. We then followed this up with a walking tour assessment that we call Walk Shop. So we walked the streets of Hanover, we walked from Malfield to the downtown, we walked throughout the downtown, and the people that participated, I think we had just over 30 participants, we're really asked to look at Hanover from the perspective of someone who hasn't been here before. So if you needed an ATM, is there one available and where would you go? If you were at the library, would you know where the downtown is and how to get there? If you were looking for a place to lock your bike up, are there bike racks? So trying to see Hanover through the eyes of a visitor. And then we took that feedback and built it into um, our plan. So we tested out what we were learning um, about two months ago. We had a, a big public event over at the library, had a great turnout, shared some of what you're about to see with that group, and got some public feedback, and then built it into what we call an action plan. And that's what you received in advance, which is a pretty detailed document and includes 
all the research and input that we received over the last year, but then tried to distill it into uh, some action plan goals and then some tactics to help achieve those goals. So what you're seeing on the screen in front of you are the higher level goals, um, which include promoting revitalization and retaining businesses, improving walkability and bikeability throughout the borough, uh, creating visitor information and, and enhancing its availability, uh, improving the appearance of downtown Hanover from landscaping to streetscaping, initiating a market, marketing campaign to attract that outdoor demographic, uh, and then continuing to just elevate nature-based assets within the way that people think about Hanover uh, and the surrounding area. So what does that actually look like put into practice? Those are the priority actions that uh, really rose to the top. And during our public session, we actually had participants rank them. And so these uh, are the ones out of all the goals that are in the action plan that really rise up as priority goals, so, or priority actions. Uh, the number one was supporting phases of the extension of the Hanover Trolley Trail, knowing that that's not gonna happen quickly. It's a complex project. The Rail Trail Authority now owns much of the corridor, um, but there's still a lot of work to do. So really it's about just being advocates for that, wanting to see it come to fruition. Uh, evaluating where it would make sense to have bike lanes in Hanover, um, and then where it does make sense installing them. Really that's part of the ongoing streetscape study that you're already working towards uh, and the conceptual planning that's already been done for that. Uh, one of the things that really came to the surface during our process was the interest in better connecting Hanover to Gettysburg. And about 15 years ago, there was a feasibility study, study done on a potential trail connection there. Uh, it's even more complex than the connection to Spring Grove that we're already you know, tangibly moving towards. But we didn't want to lose sight that there is this potential to better connect Hanover and Gettysburg. And obviously, if you can do that, tap into the uh, multiple millions of visitors that Gettysburg gets every year. So that is more conceptual and aspirational, but we don't want to lose sight of it. Um, assessing the alleys for improved bike and pedestrian safety, and um, that's an ongoing uh, interest I know of council and the borough. Uh, reviewing and improving the on-street route and signage for the connection to where the Hanover Trolley Trail currently ends at Mount Field into the downtown, and I'll have an image to show you in a second on what that potentially looks like. Uh, Signage and wayfinding always comes to the top of the list in every community and continuing to you know, help people get around the community more easily by telling them there's businesses here, there's services there, the library's here, uh, and being more consistent with that. And then continuing to have our action team meet and help us implement these goals over time. So those are the actions that rise to the top. And then within the action plan, there's an implementation grid that tries to say, okay, this is a plan, but we don't want it to sit on a shelf. How do we make sure we advance it? Uh, and we tried to attach suggested leads to each of the goals or each of the actions, potential partners that would help the lead achieve their goal, the time frame. Uh, some of these are very short term and some are looking out several years. Just a generic cost range from inexpensive to you know multiple <laughs> millions of dollars in some cases uh, and over many years and then tried to look at some of the funding sources that would help make it possible. Um, the important thing to note here is that there are uh, some of these actions are economic alliance led so we're saying we'll, we will lead them. Some are things that Main Street Hanover and other partners already have underway and will continue to lead and then some of these are borough related but none of them are things that the borough is not already undertaking. So for example, some of these actions are related to the outcome of a streetscaping plan. Um, some of them are related to um, ongoing assessments of alleys and, the, and trying to look for better ways to get around the downtown. Um, and the plan itself does not commit the borough to any new projects or any funding for these projects. Uh, because there are partners that are bringing the funding to the table to help make these possible. Or we're saying that YCA or our partners need to go out and secure the funding to make some of these things possible. Um, we didn't want to wait uh, until the plan was totally done before we started picking away at some of the low-hanging fruit. So one of the things that we've already done, because it just came every time we would meet as an action team, every time we had a public session, this connection between Mount Field and the downtown came up over and over again. Right now there is an on-road route that's already marked with some signage. 
but the feedback was that it's not I the ideal route and the signage isn't very clear. And so we um, issued an RFP to find a consult that could help us look at the on-road route that exists, evaluate if there's a better on-street route, and then also look at other alternative off-street routes, including the rail alignment that goes out to the uh, northeast of Malfield and connects into the downtown. There's a lot of interest in that, but um, nobody has gone back to our knowledge and, and exhaustively looked at who owns the land, what restrictions are put on the land, um, and understand is there any potential that the Hanover Trolley Trail could continue off-road into the downtown to the library. Um, but this consultant would do that heavy lifting, work through it, and we already had the funding through DCD to pay for that. So we've already set them loose on starting to work on that, obviously in coordination with Eric and the team at the borough. Um, so that's just a little bit of an indication that we don't want this to sit on the shelf and gather dust. We want to actually do these things, and we're already starting to do them. Um, so, of course, I can take any questions that you have, but the request that's in front of you this evening is um, to approve a resolution that, again, is more about saying that the borough itself is in support of this work that's happening and the action plan that's been uh, assembled by the community and by our action team and YCEA. Um, and that's sort of the last piece of our planning process. And then we jump back into getting to implement some of these goals that the community helped develop. So any, any questions on any of that? I have a question. I just have a comment. Commendations to you, including some funding resources. Sometimes all this is like, oh, it's great stuff to do, but where's the money? Mm -hmm. And you have some really great suggestions there. So that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, and we had, uh, it's a good sign when uh, funders are proactively reaching out saying, hey, you should look at our program. And we did have some of that as part of this from some state agencies, some local foundations, because I think there is some real excitement around it. Good. Is that some of that stuff? Is that from grants? Yes, that would primarily be. Are they more available right now? Uh, in some cases, they're programs that have been around for a while, and then some are, you know, the infrastructure bill starting to trickle down into some funding programs, especially around the multimodal things like the bicycle and pedestrian safety, uh, trails. There's some funding programs that are much more robust now because they have new funding sources. And then um, we have been talking with the Planning Commission too because some of the programs that they've historically had that required a local match, they're, they're now able to waive the local match. So it allows municipalities and nonprofits to apply and not have to come up with, you know, you get, you get you, a three million. Why do you think that changed? What, what because of the federal funding trickling down. They were able to say, look, we have more funding than we've ever had. <clears throat> we can waive a 20% match and allow people to access it that never could before. And then I think you see um, foundations and private individuals wanting to match some of the money that's now available too. And that's, that's new, I think. That's nice. But I think the key is having a plan in place so they feel like, okay, we're gonna support this project, but it's not just this thing that's isolated and out here and it might go away. It's part of a plan. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've inspired a little bit of confidence just by going through this process and getting it down on paper. Nice. Thank you. I was curious, how did you get the surveys out? Uh, primarily social media. Um, and then we had some community partners like the library, the Y, uh, the borough help share the link. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. that's because so it was 462 response, you know what I mean? It, Somebody got the message. And it was one of those things where social media worked in our favor where it starts uh, becoming a little viral and people are sharing it. And, you know, we did, uh, we've done a similar one in all seven communities, Hanover by far the, the highest number of completed surveys. No, so that's a good, very nice. good sign. Yeah. Shows we want that. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Well done. Yeah. Okay. We need a motion to approve. So we need a motion. To I'll approve. To approve. And a second. I'll second that. Sure. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Silas? Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, Council. We appreciate it. So I see he's provided a resolution, so I guess we'll get what Dory did have that ready for next Wednesday night. It's all ready. This, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming. Mr. Shelton, here's Johnny. Isn't that what he's saying? <laughs> Welcome. 
Logan. Welcome. Thank you very much. It took you so long to get here. We've been looking for you for months. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting for you to sign me up. There you go. Um, just uh, real quick, uh, my name's uh, James Shelton, um, uh, the new uh, uh, director, finance director and treasurer for the Hanover Borough. Um, my background is mostly in financial services for public companies, uh, the legal industry, the securities industry, and government contracting. Um, certified public accountant, um, very adept in, in, in business operations, so I hope to add a lot of value to the borough. Um, I take my work very seriously. I, I, I feel like being a, I'm a fiduciary for the borough to protect its assets and ensure that we're properly using our funds, scarce for, funds, uh, in the proper manner and working with the council and the borough manager to ensure that is, is done. Um, I will say with uh, interviewing Mr. Shelton was probably the broadest group of people. Really I, I was uh, fortunate enough to be part of it. Uh, Nan was there. Barb was there. Mm -hmm. Eric was Eric. there. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy was there. We had a, a, a pretty big group, and um, I thought some some – fairly long discussion but some really good okay. points and um, seem to be a really great fit so I'm really excited that you're here and looking forward to getting to all work together absolutely I'm excited to be here Happy to have you. thank you you have everything that you need to get started we gave you a pencil and a piece of paper right <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, I'm diving in head first it's a little bit of information overload at the moment but uh, really just digging through um, focusing a lot on you know, winding up our, 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 our year end and our audit we with the change in auditors and uh, that's always a challenge and you lose the, the finance manager you know, back in the fall so the borough has done well to, to keep treading water up to this point which is great um, and then once we wrap up that and the audit and the financials we'll do all our compliance filings and then we'll be launching right into the FY 23 budgeting process actually it's right on the on our heels so um, we could, we'll be doing head into that as well so we have a lot of things on the horizon and uh, there's a there's a backload of different projects as well too that we're looking forward to getting into it shouldn't well, be boring for you no be. not at all absolutely not we're a little fragmented organizationally right now and, and we're always a little bit on the fragmented side so um, if there's anything you need you're not getting or whatever feel free to contact dr rupp myself or, or whomever because we'll do whatever we can to or anybody you know yeah. here certainly Eric and whatever whatever you need we'll make sure that you have okay everybody's been very helpful up to this point good I'm pleased so excellent we did get you a computer too right yes all right thank you computer all right any questions for mr. Shelton okay. none Tim Chuck our digital partners. All good. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. They're in the. I'm um, good. They're in the. They're in the. They're, this is the COVID waiting room you have right there, except for <laughs> Justine. So, all right. Well, sir, thank right. you very much. Thank you. And welcome to the the team, the club, the borough. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So. Um, Next are, I think, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, item 5A, uh, Borough Treasurer appoint James Shelton as Borough Treasurer effective May 9 and rescind the appointment of Amy Hill as Interim Borough Treasurer effective May 9. So motion. Motion. Second? Second. Any discussion? Does that require a roll call or not? No. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 5B, York Adams Tax Bureau, appoint James Shelton, Finance Director, as our borough representative. So motion. A second, please. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Item six, Department of Planning and Engineering. 
Mr. Maines. So I'm going to pinch hit on this one with AJ being out. Uh, this is related to the CDBG grants we have for uh, recreational contracts. So as you know, I've been working with the Public Works Department to try and get some of these projects moving along, and certainly they're moving in concert with your comprehensive recreational planning effort that's going on as well. Uh, and so what is asked of you tonight is basically to approve extensions for these two particular CDBG grants so that we can continue uh, to do that work. Make a motion to approve. Okay. Second? Second. Any discussion, questions? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item two. Uh, this is my, my newly appointed role uh, as your <laughs> interim director for water resources. So this is, uh, as you've seen me bring to you in the past, uh, water service extension agreements. This one's actually a little bit different in that this is not some large, sprawling residential development. Uh, this is actually a commercial development. It's four, uh, it's like a strip center. It's about four box units or about 9,000 square feet each. Uh, light retail, that sort of a thing. Uh, it's a long gets run road. What's interesting about this one is approval of this extension actually will allow us to tie together two loose ends where I have a water system that comes up industrial drive and stops. This is going to get uh, at the developer's expense, get that pulled down, almost connecting onto our water system that's over uh, on the other side of the property. And what we will do is we'll bring our end then to connect and now I have a loop. So we don't uh, have two stubs anymore. Correct. And that, that yeah. helps us for a number of reasons. Water quality is the most important of those because when you have a dead end in a water line, it requires our staff to go out from time to time and blow it off and make sure it's not getting cloudy. Uh, so connecting that together is good for water quality. It also is really, really good for water pressure. Uh, so it gives us that redundancy. So this is the one, one time where I get to come to you and say, hey, this is a good one because this one's actually going to benefit us a little bit. Will we um, be adding any hydrants out there? Yeah. Yep, yeah, uh, the, the developer of this is actually going to have to provide a hydrant with it. Uh, cool. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Do we need a motion to motion. Uh, approve that? Okay. A second? Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Um, are you also uh, public I'm, I'm works department? I'm here for 8B, so I'm going to sit here. Uh, I don't have much for you on 8A, so I uh, mm -hmm. can't help you with that one. But 8B, I can help you with. Okay. I can speak to you 8A wanna, if you'd like. Well, let, why don't we let Eric finish, and then we'll, we'll go to back to 8A if that's okay. Uh, so 8B is basically asking for council's approval to an extend a DCDE grant for wayfinding signs. Uh, and what we're trying to do here is uh, between AJ and myself and Main Street Hanover, uh, we've identified a, a potential vendor for a product that we think is going to be really good in the downtown. It's going to address something uh, Councillor Funk and I have talked about, which is this is uh, a sign called a SUFA sign. So S-O-O-F-A, SUFA. And what they are is they are large digital signs, uh, not bright in the sense like that, but they're a digital sign and they have an LCD screen on them, kind of like what you might see at a mall kiosk or something like that. And it can change, and it can be tied into your social media. It can be tied into weather and traffic information. It can be tied into, uh, you could post your council agendas there if you wanted. You know, you get some control of that content. What's nice about them is they're very self-contained. They're solar powered, so I don't need to run electricity to it and all that. And you can use it then uh, to promote things like businesses. And we've talked about, you know, in the downtown, it would be nice if we could make people aware of businesses and things that may not necessarily be right there downtown. Here's an opportunity where maybe you could list them uh, or you could have some sort of a QR code or something that people could scan and be like, oh, I didn't know that was out there. And it could actually help drive that. I think it's something that if it's successful, I could actually see this expanding into other locations. The ask of you now with this grant uh, that we have now in the scope of this is really one of them. Uh, it certainly is a, a pilot project to see how it goes. Um, and then if it's successful, we would like to maybe grow that. Another one maybe in the downtown, perhaps one on, you know, if the borough office ends up moving somewhere else, maybe we would have one there. Uh, but for now, we need, an, uh, we need a grant extension in order to kind of work through those last logistics. Uh, uh, you know, with the company to make sure that everything's on par with where we need to be. How much of what was the, uh, the, the amount? All grant covered. Uh, I think the, the signs themselves, it's sort of a leased arrangement, but I believe it's around 15000 is the total for the sign. 
Uh, and then there is a, a commitment where basically they take care of the sign for you. So if it gets hit or damaged, they take care of it. They also actually uh, come out and clean the solar panels off for you and clean the sign itself occasionally to make sure that it's up and functioning. And then there are different tiers of how you can engage with the vendor. There's one where you sort of give them control uh, and they're allowed to kind of run messaging and ads and they would reach out to local businesses and things uh, down to the other end of the spectrum where you're in full control. Obviously, when you're in more full control, you're going to subsidize more of the cost of the sign. When they're in control, then they're saying, hey, we're going to get some of that, so we'll subsidize more of it. So those are discussions we'll work through later. But for now, the acquisition of the sign and all that is covered by the grant, uh, which is okay. the nice part. Uh, I don't have an exact dimension, just by the thing. I, I mean, I'm guessing they're probably about six to eight foot. I mean, they're, they're not massively huge. They're, they're about the height of a, a tall person. Uh, and just width like the size they're, of a road construction. You know, they're probably so. about three feet maybe in size, enough that you get a screen, you can see it and, and have it scroll and be able to read it without you know, squinting at it. Where? Yeah, and, and then you can wrap them with vinyl, and uh, you can decide, you know, do you want to put uh, branding from the borough? Do you want to put things like that on it? Or do you want to open that up and let somebody sponsor it? You know, maybe you go out and say, hey, uh, hey, corporation, maybe you'd like to put a wrap on this sign. And, you know, it, it's very similar to what you used to see, like with bus stops and things like that, where people would put a static sign. This is an opportunity maybe to do something similar there. Well, I think personally it's a great opportunity for us. Yeah. I really do, to help Where us with the entire Hanover curious. area. We haven't I gotten do. to that exact point yet. I, I, I mean, there's a couple the different visit. locations. Somewhere, obviously, in the downtown would be where we would. We're going to want to get some visibility out of it, but I also have to be careful about making sure we put it in a place where I'm not worried about somebody hitting it uh, with a vehicle or something yeah. like that. So i got to give that some thought. The nice thing, again, too, is at first I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to spend all this money on this sign, bolt it down and everything, and then find out with Streetscape when we're done with that. Uh, we're going to tear that area up and put something else there. The nice thing is all I would have to do is unbolt it, move it, move it yeah. put it somewhere else, and re-bolt it back down again. So it's, it's not going to stop us from our streetscape efforts. Uh, and if we put it somewhere, I'm like, yeah, that's a really bad location. All right, we can move it up and move it. We do have to keep in mind it does need to be in view of the sun for a certain part of the day so that it can get what it needs to charge to continue uh, running the battery. And it has Wi-Fi, I guess, over one of the cell phone networks. Yep. Okay. Internet of Things. So motion. motion. I will do that. With and a pleasure. second. I'll second it. Okay. And I think we've had the discussion. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right. Thank you, Mr. Maines. Dory? Trash hauling bid. You always get the fun ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we open bids uh, for the transfer station hauling bid. The trucks would take the garbage up to the uh, resource recovery center, the incinerator up in York. Um, the contract's up at the end of May. Um, we got two bids. Um, Curtin and Sullivan is our current contractor, which was the low bidder. But still, it was about, um, I gave you um, a spreadsheet there for two tabulations. I think it was like 46% wow. increase or something like that. So AJ is currently um, out. He is on sick leave right now. But we did contact him, and he does want to go over some different options to see if we can perhaps extend the contract with Curtin and Sullivan at the current rate, and then do a little bit of creative things to the do we have any experience with uh, fuel adders where, based on the price of oil, it does up or down? So that we have right now, it's it obviously at a disadvantage, which is when we're contracting for. But um, that's a pretty huge increase. KBS did propose yeah. that. Where they come down, then you 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 gain. Yeah. We don't have that in the specifications right now, but in talking to AJ, he feels. If you would like to investigate extending the current contract with Curtin and Sullivan in cooperation with Solicitor Schultes, perhaps, and then maybe rebidding it to include a different option that he suggested maybe for the trucks to use our fuel, since it's cheaper for us, since we pay a lower cost. He's trying to be a little... That would be sort of the system. same as the fuel. That, that's yes, a good idea, too. Good, yeah. Because the contract's for two years. So... I think it's reasonable to think the price of oil is going to not be at 
5 or $6 a gallon for diesel fuel forever. So at this point, yeah, he's worried that if we do take the contract and it's higher, that if the fuel comes down, we'll be on the losing end of it. Yeah. So he wants to investigate it further to see if it would be more advantageous to you know, reject the bid and rebid it and extend the current contract. But he will look into that and then we'll have more information when it comes to council. But for now, we thought we would just move the bid okay. along and with the reference to staff and um, solicitor review of that. I think that's a good okay. idea. Is there, good idea. I don't, do we need a motion to approve that or was that just an informational? I guess. So, okay. Everybody all right with that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion or a second? Or do we, we want a motion? I, I guess just, just to place it on the To place it on the agenda for, so for next week. Yeah. Okay. So okay. But we'll have more Chris, motion and a second? Second. All right. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're changing seats, huh? I am. All right. I'm sorry. Okay. So we'll go to uh, the Public Safety Committee. That, I guess that's me. I guess that's you. <laughs> right. So I, I um, sent around uh, the revised noise ordinance from our last discussion. Mm -hmm. I removed the specific reference to the decibel standards. Um, and we talked briefly last time about the impulse noise issue. And in this current draft, I highlighted that to remove it, um, but didn't remove it yet because we, we need to discuss that. The impulse noise uh, references an objective standard, just like a decibel standard, but it's somewhat different. Uh, and because council wanted to get away from a, an objective decibel standard, um, I think we need to discuss that. So. It was council's view that it was easier to administer the ordinance if we set reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions on noise. And following that logic, we would then uh, place restrictions on impulse noises with a reasonable time, place, and manner restriction, just like the other ones. So I uh, wanted to open that up to council to discuss. Um, I know that Councillor Hegberg has much more experience with noise issues than I do, uh, so I'm interested to hear what he has to say. Chuck? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm in agreement with, with what he's saying. Impulse pulse noise is one that's gener generally associated with contract, you know, contract work. Um, pile driving, hammering, those kind of things, which sends a vibration through the ground. The one that's a bit more challenging is what our good doctor has been dealing with is more harmonic noise from metal vibrating. Um, that that would I would assume would come up, come under our noise rather than impulse. So there's no banging or, or vibration. It could be a vibration if it's attached to his building through the walls. But I think a time, place, and manner for impulse would be fine. You, you know when your house is vibrating. <laughs> well, I, I, I went through the doctor's house, and it's, yeah, it was a, a moving experience, quite literally. Is that resolved now? No. Scott, was it a harmonic noise, a vibration noise, or harmonic just, noise? Yeah, it was okay. about a hundred or one hundred and fifty hertz, something like that. Maybe I don't. High frequency. No, low. Low, sir. Sorry. Yeah. I I don't. I don't know. We can. I, I would request that we don't discuss it. Oh, yeah. Okay. We could sense. be here all night. Sorry. Yeah. So, so what do, what do we need to do with this? Uh, so, uh, as defined in the ordinance, uh, an impulse sound is a sound of short duration, usually less than a second, with an abrupt onset and rapid decay. Examples are explosions, drop forge impacts like pile drivers and firearms. So that's how it's defined in the ordinance. If you want to move that into the reasonable time, place, and manner, uh, we have essentially 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. as as the standard 
pretty, you know, pretty close across the board. So I guess my, my recommendation would be to put it in that time frame as well. Is everybody okay with that? that makes sense. Yeah. Seems yeah. reasonable. I think that's reasonable. Yes. So you can only discharge a firearm during a day. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you want to say no to that, please. <laughs> the police are exempt. The police are exempt. <laughs> Hopefully they're not discharging either. <laughs> yeah, we did exempt the police from that. Um, so uh, with that direction, we, we don't need a motion. I, I have consensus of council. Uh, I will amend the ordinance and resend it out and then um, and then we'll be in a position to uh, authorize its advertisement. Could we do that at the upcoming meeting? I, I would prefer that you not, uh, only because we have some other pressing issues that we have to deal with at the next meeting. Fair enough. But we are moving along, which is good. Yeah. Yes. All right. So. Um, 9B, hiring of three police officers. that and uh, yes yeah, so, so we're requesting uh, council uh, vote to approve a hire three officers uh, conditional officers offers were uh, of employment were given to uh, three candidates who have met those qualifications passed the backgrounds medical right. psychological exams can I get a motion to approve that so motion a second second all right does that need a roll call vote or not okay those in favor aye aye, aye. okay Any aye favor? Okay. Any opposed? Well, that was easy. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Item 10, reports of council members, council committees, and other public bodies. All right. Sounds uh, good that there's none of those. Uh, item 11, any management reports? Other than what's in the package all right any correspondence and information for the record i have two um things we as you may know we have the maps like we have over there beside the agendas that were done by target marketing we the last time we did that was two years ago yeah. they solicit businesses in the area and they provide um, a total of about ten thousand maps at no cost to us some of these maps are given to the businesses who agree to pay for the advertising, and then we get about 5,000 of the maps um, to hand out, and we share those with the Chamber of Commerce and the library. But okay. we're running out of the maps, so Target Marketing is the company that handles that, and if anybody remembers that from the last time, what they do is they, um, they reference us in their um, solicitation for advertisement that it's a, a borough project and um, they will solicit businesses. So I can give you, what we're gonna do is we're gonna send you an email tomorrow so let you see what their, their sheet looks like. And a lot of them, a lot of the businesses sometimes think that they're being scammed. So we just wanted to let you know that um, Valerie is beginning to work with this company to do a new project. It usually takes about four months or so. Okay. Justine, then, can you help um, us with that, with communicating with the different businesses so they're aware of what's going on and maybe it's an opportunity for them too to advertise in the, in the new map it. version? Is that reasonable, Dory? Yeah, yes. I think Justine's familiar with that with this effort because in the past the chamber also years ago had their maps made through a company like this and um, it, I think it helps a lot of the businesses to get their advertising out there because anybody that comes in and signs up for a new service we have the maps on the counter and they, they go like wildfire and people love them so okay so, so if nobody has any questions on that, I got one more thing. Okay. Chief Clouser wanted to know if anyone wanted to ride on the fire truck in the Memorial Day parade. Um, I know Chuck, you had expressed interest for that, and he says 
that uh, we need to meet at the fire station at Wart Park Fire Station at 8.15 a.m. And Chief Clouser would like a head count as to how many people are going to be riding on the fire truck. This is for the Saturday or what? Uh, Memorial Day parade, Monday. which would be Monday, May 30th. Okay. I went last year. I was the only one that went. I felt kind of dumb. Well, Chuck's going this time. Right. Well, then Chuck, you and I will go together. I get to uh, ring. I'm excited. We both get to ring the bell. I'd be in the car. You have to wear a helmet. I want to wear the hat, though. All right, you have it. Okay. I think you should ride in the bucket. That's for Santa Claus. <laughs> Yeah, they need, you need to be at the ladder truck by 0815 hours. The truck will be staged on Carlisle Street at Gale Street. So Carlisle Street at Gale Street, where the ladder truck will be. So you got that truck? Chuck, you can park at the Young Manor. <laughs> I got it. Okay. If anybody else wants to go. Um, all right, then. Just Single file, that. no pushing. Yeah, all right. I have something, Scott. Um, yes. I'm the uh, ward for rep, and uh, for the third time in a row, they have moved the voting place of the ward for. They moved somebody else's too, didn't they? Ward two. Ward two. Uh, two. We ward moved two. To St. Uh, they moved us to a really inappropriate place. It was very challenging for people to get down the steps. It was at the old Hanover Shoe Building. First of all, the signage was pathetic. You couldn't even see where it was. They had a little sign about this big set over here. Why did we move it from the firehouse to St. Matthews? They moved from the firehouse to St. Matthew, then moved us to the other place. What happened with St. Matthews? St. Matthews told us that they didn't have the personnel to handle it. They don't have year. a building and grounds person yeah. right now. I'm thinking yeah. they, they will. They're advertising for one. They will. But I, I just, would it be appropriate for me or, or someone else to call the voting people and say that we were that many That falls complaints. under, like, Julie Wheeler under the county commissioners? There. Does it? I don't know. It does. Okay, oh, yeah. I, I know Julie. I, could call. Yeah, I don't want to bother Julie. I only Julie. know that because Julie election. was asking me for, yes. looking for people. I, to, I wouldn't bother with Julie. I just start right. asking people. Yeah. All right. My I second. would second. I would second Barb's complaint. It was very challenging for people to. They, they had a, they had a runway kind of thing that people could go who in a wheelchair, but it was real long. And they were going fast by the end. <laughs> so I mean, it was like, oh, well, no one has to. There's a spec for what one in twelve, one inch for twelve. For, yeah, but it the, was just the, was some lady should uh, she had braces on both her legs and she had a walker. It was very challenging for her. Okay. And, um, well. But so I'll just call them and just see if maybe they go back to St. Matthew the next time because St. Matthew might have right. the personnel there. On, on the flip side of that, we got a lot of compliments of the Ward 2 being moved to St. Mark's Where'd Church. Where'd you move to? St. Mark's Church. Oh, Park, okay. Uh, right off of um, oh, that's nice. Charles Street. Yeah, that yeah, was much better. Yeah, the that's much better. It was, was better. You know, really good parking. It was more spacious. Um, yeah, people, See, there's no people, parking here because people that are parked there live in the apartments. Right. It was ch there was no handicap parking, mm -hmm. accessibility. It was, it was not good. Right. Well, um, I think that... All that kind of happened last minute. I heard Matthews, it did happen last minute. And I think they yeah. were just scrambling to yeah. find any place. But, but it's just then that somebody said, where will we be the next time? And right. so they just feel like they're being discriminated against. Right. And they're trying getting the Both places. Around. Yeah. My, my other comment is, um, it appears that Mr. Robgarder had information about the site plan. Was that available to the rest of us? Or did we get an email today that? It's on the web. should be on the website. I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. The site plan. I didn't know to look for it. The, he had information about the coverage of the area of the of the uh, primrose lane properties, um, and oh. I was wondering how he got that information. We didn't have that. We should have had that. It's all in this packet. The he had the new information that he shared. I don't know. Oh. Okay, I just wondered. It'd be nice to get that same information. You did right here. In our, we had this big packet that was given to us. I mean, I had, a, I had a copy of it, but yeah. I mine came through an unconventional <coughs> channel. Well, we were all given right. this. I don't know for, the answer um, to that. Well, that helped me understand. Thank you very much. Okay. I mean, this was the, uh, the um, exhibits. I have that information. I just know where it was. I'll look for it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All, I will say that all of the exhibits that were introduced at the hearing were distributed by email to council, and and I think. And, and I, I just didn't know where yeah. it was. Yeah. So 
So I know where it is now. Thanks. Um, and I think given out at the hearing itself, that yes. it's a big package. Mm -hmm. so. yes. I have that same information. I just don't know where it was. It's yeah. in a pile on my desk like this. <laughs> okay. Um, any other additional public comment? Good for her. She's doing really well. Tell her we all send our regards. Okay. Um, any other comments? Eric? Uh, oh, yes. I would like to acknowledge Mr. Fuente. He's back. Hello. There we go. I'm happy to be back. Well, we're very happy to have you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Sounds strong. And uh, you're feeling. Good to see all those faces. You're uh, you're back to 110 percent. I'm I'm trying my best. Okay. But, uh, I just heard something about was it board was it ward two or four has a hard time with the with getting the the handicap accessibility. Right. Get people in there that can't be. That, we're going to have to fix that. We're going to have to fix that very soon. Can't have that. So, you've got my support there. All right. Thank you, sir. Now that I'm in a wheelchair and all, I kind of understand. Yeah, you, 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 have, you have a whole newfound uh, soft whole, side for that, right? Oh, definitely. Definitely definitely good. makes things hard for us to, to get around, but preventing people from voting is not something we can have. I not agree. Handy. Do you think you right. will, will you be here physically next Wednesday, a week from today? I will be there. Um, that's my plans and my hopes. Even if I got to take a, uh, be carried down. Can you, some of you guys give me a hand and carry me down? We well, we do the trash chute. <laughs> we can send you down that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. Even if it's an elevator for uh, the freight. Is that what you said? I've, Chief, you know, no. Chief Martin is going to take care of the... Uh, the freight. Sounds you'll good. Be, you'll be in his uh, competent care. Well, then you'll see me. All right. Rep All right. My ward. All right. We look forward to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just one more public comment. Yeah, Ms. Preps has uh, chatted that she'd be happy to help with the uh, map creation. Say again. I'm sorry. Ms. Preps has said she'd be happy to help with the map creation. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Justine. All right, uh, I guess if there's no further public comment, uh, how about we entertain a motion to adjourn? So motion. Second. Okay. Second, a third, fourth. Okay. So moved. We are adjourned at 8.15. Thank you all.